Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast. This is episode 13. Welcome, my name is Hannah and I can be found as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. And there is a blog where I post this um, podcast as well as some show notes with links to anything I talk about. And that can be found on rosehipknitspodcast.blogspot.com. In the last few episodes, um, or for the last few episodes, I haven't actually put any links in the show notes because I haven't been talking about anything new. So if you just go down to previous posts and previous podcasts and episodes, then you can find links there for things that I have talked about. So um, I'm so happy to talk to you all again. Today will be a little bit different. I have not... Oh, I do not have a lot of things to show you. No, that's not true. I do not have any knitting to show you because I have mostly been working on the secret test knit that I have been uh, working on for Maria of the Stitched in Sweden podcast. By the time this is up on YouTube, it might be that she has published a pattern. Um, but at this point... Um, I am not able to show you um, the little garment that I made. So because I haven't been working mostly on that, the other things that I've been working on have not had a lot of um, attention. So it's not really anything that I um, think is worthwhile bringing out to show you. But I still wanted to record a little bit today. And... Um, it will probably be a while from today that I actually put this up on YouTube. So if anything seems to be out of order and weird, you've seen things on Instagram maybe um, a while back and I'm talking about it again today, that's why. July is just a very busy month for me and for my family. And um, yes, I just wanted to take the opportunity when I had it today to record something for you that I can put up on YouTube for you. And I forgot to say thank you for everybody who's watching, for everybody who's coming back and for anyone who's um, checking the podcast out for the, out for the first time. Hi, um, you're very welcome. I hope you like it. Today is a little bit different as I said. So if you want to see more works in progress and finished objects, go back couple of episodes maybe but as I say that I don't have knitting to show you that's not completely true I did record a um, little segment the other day where I showed you or I show you some of the baby knits that I have some of them have been given to me to my daughter and a lot of them that I have made in the last five years or so and um, I just thought that it'd be nice to show those things and just talk about um, baby knits that I like and yarn that I like to knit baby knits from and just little details like that. Mostly I'm just showing um, cute little things off and hopefully there's some um, useful information in there. But I did record that, so I'll put that at the end. Um, of this episode. So what I have been doing and that I can show you is a little bit of dyeing and as you can see back on my warping board there's a self-striping skein there again and it's a different one from the one that was there in the last episode. Um, and I have some that are not quite dry yet. Quickly uh, I can tell you how I go about with doing my self-striping. So I have the warping board so when I get the skeins out. I actually put them um, in a cake form on my ball binder and then with the cake I wrap it on the ball, warping board. And that is just to get as long of a skein as possible and with that length you can do long sections of one colour. So for this, for this, with this one for example there's a long section of purple, a long section of a sky blue, long section of a pink 
and then I have some shorter sections of yellow and a bit of speckled in between and I, I don't really know how that will turn out when you knit it up but what I did is that I I looked at the stripes on the socks that I'm, I'm currently making and they're the um, sort of green and pinky striped socks that I have shown you several times and I thought that's a good number of rows for each stripe and on the yarn I just checked how many arms length I could get for each colour and I then used that as the indicator and my measure for when I did new skeins so I know that um, about how many rows I will get for each colour and then you never know if someone else knits them and have um, if they have a larger number of stitches around the sock and if they have a different gauge and everything different needles it will just come out differently and if you don't make socks of course it will be very different but um, yes that's how I did it and um, I only do the self striping on wool nylon sock yarn now but I can show you a skein that I did a while back this one here this is a just a superwash merino and this is actually a self striping but I did not make very detailed notes when I made it but I did put it on a warping board so each stripe is quite a long section of color so there's a light green, a turquoise, tealy colour, a sky blue and a pink. So there's um, four different colour stripes in this one. And after I did this, and it's I must say, must say that it's quite labour intensive to do self striping. I mean the actual putting the dye on, that's easy know if you've made notes and you know what you want to do once you have the skein ready and you sort of put your section I put my sections out on pla plastic I do a circle but I bunch up um, sections of the yarn that for each color that I want to do mix the color and put it on each section let it sit for a while wrap it up in the plastic and I put it in my steamer in plastic bag and um, but the time of putting the skein on the warping board takes a lot of time and then I put quite a lot of ties in see there because if you get a mess out of the skein it's impossible to get it right and um, once it's been dyed I just rinse it the way it is in water and hang it out to dry but I'm not happy with that wash um, so then I put back on the warping board and make sure it's all dry and then I skein it up like this on my Nidi Nordi and this is one I just did when I have it in a skein like this I give it a proper bath with a wool wash and a bit of uh, warmer water because I want to make sure that the colors are not bleeding into each other so this is another one I did and that has it's four stripes but two stripes are gray so it's like a pea green a hot pink and then this the gray stripe and then another gray stripe that has a little bit of purple speckles in it so that's one that I just got off the warping board I made it into a smaller skein on a nitty noddy and gave it a bath and it's now drying. And I have another another four striper here that I made a couple of days ago and that has a, a teal, a pink, a yellow and a grey stripe. Okay, so that's the self striping that I've been making. So that one there I'm about to put on a needy noddy and give it a good wash in some wool wash. 
And um, someone asked me, and I think it was a while back, what dyes that I use when I do my dyeing. And I've talked previously about that I, I started with food colours, food colour, food colouring. And I think I actually have some here that I can show you, like this type of food colouring. And now I always use acid dyes and I use the landscape acid dyes and also a brand called Gay Wool. And I'm happy with both of them. And I use vinegar sometimes, but often I only use the citric acid in the bath when I soak the yarn before I dye it. So yes, that's something that I have been doing in the last little bit. And um, I'll show you a thing that I received in the post before we go on to the baby knits. I took part in the spring oh, can I find it now? Yes, the spring cleaning knit along with um, Shannon of the Heart of Wool podcast and I showed you that I I frogged a cardigan, a garter yoke cardigan that I had made out of the Yosharp DK wool and some hand spun. So that's all frogged. Have to give that wool a bath. Um, but I was drawn um, as a winner for that cow. And I just the other day received the prize. And it's some stitch markers from Winemaker's Sister. I think it's .etsy.com. So it came in this nice little um, bag, and that's the card. With one make a sister. .etsy.com. Heather. And there was a little coffee candy in the bag, and oh, I haven't actually unwrapped the stitch markers properly. I'm sorry about that funny sound. So these are the stitch markers that I chose for my price. So it has one ram and then the use. And I chose the lobster claw for my stitch markers because I find them very useful. And I do have a lot of just the ring ones. So yes, that arrived and I'm so happy. So thank you, Shannon. Um, it was definitely worth to frog that card again after two years sitting in the wardrobe. So, yes, I'm excited to use these when I start casting on new projects after I have finished the things that are on the go at the moment. So that's probably all I have for you today. And we'll go on to the baby knit section. And um, as I, I, I've explained it, before at the start of the episode that I'll just go through a few baby knits and it's only the smaller sizes I have more larger sizes that I might do it another time if anyone's interested and um, I just wanted to show one knit now that I forgot to show because I did talk about that I quite like vests for baby knits and I didn't mention that dresses are also really good for girls and this is one it's called the Pataconk by Heidi Atwood Reeves and this is a test knit that I did out of some uh, hand dyed DK white wool and this is actually a wool that I got from our local or it's a northern Tasmania um, woolen mill but it's no longer working here they still they it's called Waverly woolen mills and now they make blankets but um, they don't make it in Tasmania anymore but I did get uh, some skeins of wool there a few years back and I dyed one up and made this little dress out of it and dresses are just so good because when they're little I think this is like a six month size it's a dress and then now like my daughter is 18 months she can wear this as a vest so dresses and tunics are just very handy 
So I just I'll show you that because I didn't mention it in the little section. So I'll um we'll go to the section about baby knits now and I'll come back again. Welcome to this uh, pre-recorded little section about baby knits. I have mentioned before that I had a thought that I would show you some of the baby knits that were given to me when my first and second daughter were born and also some of the knitting that I did for them and um, yes I know that as I said before Molly of the homespun house she showed her like top three baby knits after her second daughter was born and Emma of the Shabby Pug Yarn podcast she showed a whole lot of baby knits that she has made for her gift basket and for potential future children I think and um, I must say that I started doing baby knits before I even had thoughts about having children because it is just such a good project it, you, you get a lot of different techniques um, within a small garment and it's just um, good practice and it's lots of fun and you get a result quite quickly so um, yes I thought I'll show you some of the most used baby knits that I have and my youngest she is now 18 months so I think the days of the baby knits is, is mostly um, over for me and I don't know of any friends really that are <laughs> going to have children in the next little while so um, I've had my my time with the baby knits and um, it's a bit sad now a lot of patterns only go up to 18 months so I have to go for the um, toddler patterns and child size pattern my eldest is five and I mean at the moment I'm eating her a size seven to eight um, year jumper so yes the garments are growing as they are um, but I've had a lot of fun with my baby knits so far so I'll go ahead, ahead and show you when my first daughter was born I lived in Hobart down south in Tasmania and I was part of a great knitting group down there and when my daughter was born I got a massive bag of baby knits that they had um, put together for me which was wonderful and I was very surprised because my daughter was actually five weeks early and um, they had these things to me within a week of when she was born so that was wonderful so I'll start with some of those gifts that I was given of course one of the girls made the very famous Milo vest and this is out of a hand spun and that is just beautiful and I must say that vests are probably my favorite baby knit not only to make but it's so useful it's just the big best sorry best garment for a baby I would put my children in vest in the morning when having breakfast just popping them over the pajamas and uh, make sure that they were warm in the chilly morning and that was both in summer and winter and it's just very good sort of extra layer under a jacket or just on top of a, a, um, a lighter top so yes vests are always what I recommend for people when they wonder what sort of baby knits to do for gifts and making it in a hand spun just makes that extra special and I have never made Milo myself and I guess I'm, it's getting a little bit late for that now um, but the vest that I um, did a few of was the pebble vest and I should tell you that the Milo vest is made by or just designed by Georgie Hallam the other vest that this is another hand spun vest that was given to me 
by a lady in the knitting group. And this is the Pebble Vest. And the Pebble Vest is by Nicole Law, I think is the name. And that has buttons up the side. And this vest has been used so much because it was just so great to put on top of the PJs in the morning, button it up, and um, yes, it's just so beautiful. And the vest also, um, they fit the child for quite a long time because you don't have to worry about sleeve length and things like that. So this um, had a lot of use for both of my children. Again, you know, that hand spun just makes it so special. And I made a few pebble vests as well as well that I will show you. Um, another um, present for my knitting group was this cute little cardigan that was made for my daughter. And I think this might be the Daisy cardigan by is it Stephanie Pearl McPhee. Yes. And you know she put these extra little knitted flower and leaves on there. And that's also good. And so good with baby knits that you can just put the top buttons on. And um, yes, you don't have to put buttons the whole way. And that's just really good for an extra layer and a bit of warmth for the baby. So I love that. And blue is so good because it would go with pink and purple and... Um, red or any colour and it would go for a boy or a girl <coughs> excuse me and also in my knitting group I um, made a few the girls in the knitting group also made me um, quite a few pair of socks and booties and beanies all beautiful this is a very soft and nice beanie made out of hand spun and I think it's a 2x2 two two rib and um, so soft and because it's so stretchy it fits for quite some time so that got a lot of use and there were cute little booties and I must say the booties never got a lot of use but they're so cute and I know that they're fun to make because I've made baby booties as booties as presents for babies these ones and I know that the girl who made these she also made the buttons I'm pretty sure aren't they just so cute and and spun socks so nice and warm and soft and another pair of socks as well so cute and I was so happy to have those and um, <laughs> with my first child I, I was very careful with using the woolens because I was worried about washing them and, and ruining and ruining them but um, then I had them all out again for my second child and I was not so worried about them then because I thought this is the second time around I'm using them and this will probably be the last time I'm using them so I was um, not as careful with them and quite surprised that they just do so well with washing and wearing that I should really not have been worried about it um, the first time around had another beautiful present from a friend in Sweden and there's a few patterns of vests like this I think on Ravelry and um, this is made out of the Drops Alpaca in I think it's a fingering weight and she put the little flower on there for extra special detail and this was so good because it's so stretchy and it fits for a long long time and it's just perfect for an extra layer put it on in the morning or at any time when you need a little bit extra warmth so that also had a lot of usage and then 
they're all the things that I made myself. Um, as I said, my daughter was born five weeks early. So when I am, um, and she, it, was, it was totally like I was not prepared at all. You know, I had half an hour's warning, I think. And um, came home with her and, of course, all the baby needs that I had, because I had made a few items, they were all way too big. And also, because we was, she was five weeks early, I was still working, I had not had my two weeks as planned to get organised and do a bit of knitting and things for her. So straight away, I started on a cardigan and a tiny little size cardigan. And this is the Paxton by Stitchy Mama. And I made this out of the Yo Sharp oh, Alpaca Silk Georgette, I think it's called. So it has alpaca in it. And it's a five ply, so it's sport weight. And I'm pretty sure that I modified it to be the size that I needed because of my gauge. But yes, this was used a lot. And again, only the buttons up the top there, so you don't have to worry about what's underneath and easy to put on and take off. And with that, I made, <laughs> if I can find it, I made a little matching beanie. And this beanie, um, I've made quite a few. It's I think it's a prim pattern on Ravelry and um, I have all of these items that I have knit myself on my Ravelry project page and um, yes I made that see how tiny it is and that was a good size for her she was so little she was I think 2.3 kilos when she was born so yes so these lasted for quite some time and when she was wearing those she also had this other little cardigan that my mum has started making um, in a cotton, a fingering weight cotton. And this, I think it's a Swedish brand called like a rainbow yarn, Ringberg's gone. So she has started making it, but she was stuck somewhere in the pattern or she just sort of left it. And she gave it to me unfinished and I finished it up sort of a big long piece with just a little sleeves coming out. I never put buttons on it because I just put it on like this and wrapped it around her, sort of. And with this, I made a little beanie. Or maybe mum made this beanie. Yes, I think mum made it. And then Cardi and I finished after mum started it. And this had a lot of use. And um, I really liked the construction of, of this one and how it fit because it's just like a rectangle and it's all flat up the top straight and um, I need quite a few just like this after because it's so easy you just need to tube straight up and then do a three bit needle bind off so she had those quite a bit and I'm not I think the pattern for this comes with the yarn so I'm not sure if it's available on Ravelry and then I made a pebble myself and I made a pebble out of my hand spun and if you have seen me talking about the hot water bottle cozy that I made a while back I talked about the all the wool that I had and had some was it, was it Angora Goat? And this is the the same. This is the Corridale, the green, and a little bit of the yellow Angora Goat in there. So I made this pebble out of my hand spun and I put yellow buttons in there to highlight the yellow in there and little bumblebee up the top. And again, they had a lot of use. And it's, it's quite a rustic um, yarn, so it's not soft, but that doesn't matter when it's a vest because it's never going to touch the skin. So I was very happy with that. And then I modified Pebble Vest to knit it in the round. I just thought it would be much easier and faster and 
I thought when they're a bit bigger, you don't have to worry about the buttons because it's the, it's easier than to get an item or garment on over the head. Whereas when they're little, it's quite good to have the buttons down the side and you don't have to move them around so much when you dress them. But I did modify the pebble vest and I made this one. And this is out of the Bendigo Woolen Mills Classic in the 8 ply. And I really love that yarn. I think it's great. It's not the softest, but it's so hard wearing and you just put it in a washing machine and it comes out looking great so I just did the garter sides on both sides and that's just sort of it's not joined there it just looks like it's just where I've end of the round and um, it was going to be for my nephew at first and um, I can't remember what happened. I think it came out way too small. And then I found out that I was going to have a baby. So I thought I'll just hold on to it and keep it. And I found out I was having a girl. So I added a little bit of a added a heart there and put matching buttons on. And I thought, that's great. So that was really good as well. A very good garment. And then another pattern that I have used quite a lot is the Raplan, Offset Raplan it's called. And I knit that um, quite a few times for baby gifts. And I often use the um, Bella Baby Layette that you can buy in Spotlight. It's a bamboo wool. I think it's 80% wool, 20 bamboo, or maybe the other way around. I have not got anything here that I used for that, but I it's definitely in my Ravelry uh, project page. So. so this is the Raplin, offset Raplin. So I have made this a few times and many times in the Bella Baby Layette, so you can have a look in Ravelry to see. This is again made out of the Bendigo Woolen Mills Classic in the 8 ply. And I think I might have knitted this before, started knitting this before I knew if I was having a boy or a girl. So I made it the blue. It's a beautiful blue colour. And then I added the ladybird buttons to give it a little bit of fun color detail on there and this pattern is is really good the um, neck opening always seems like it's so big when you look at it it's really square and big but the feedback that I've had from um, mums that I have given this to they just they all really like it and I liked it too for my girls it's been really good and it's really cute So that's another one and as I told you before I've made a lot of these beanies just made a tube and a three bit needle bind off and this is one of my own hand spun so this is a little bit of a large, larger size maybe six months or so and that had a lot of use especially for my second daughter the thing with my daughters is that my first one was born in middle of winter second one was born in middle of summer so some of the items that were not used, woolen items that were not used a lot the first time around got more used the second time around because of how their ages was, they were different and the size were different when it was cold season. So first time it was not used so much, second time it got a lot of use because it was just the right size um, second time around. Here's another one of those. This is in a cotton, and this was um, used first time for the prim baby. But they're really, really good, and it's so easy to make, and they look so cute on. <laughs> and you can add little tassels or pom poms or something. And I know that um, oh, it's a woolly 
a woolly worm head that has a pattern similar like this but the way you bind it off you get three points I think it's called a tree peak hat maybe I have made one but I think it was actually a gift for someone so I don't have it here um, but that's a really fun knit and it's also really easy you just knit a tube tube and then and the way you bind it off you get three um, points up the top which is lots of fun and a knit that I made before my daughter was born I think <coughs> excuse me was this little I'm not even sure what to call it this was a pattern in the um, spin-off magazine I think so you wrap it around the shoulders like that and then it has buttons at the back we button it up so it will sort of sit like a shawl that goes under your arms so it goes like that it crosses in the front and I this is a, I think it's a, like a three ply so it's a light fingering that I dyed and I made matching socks to go with that one and I think unfortunately this was sort of forgotten because I made it before my daughter was born I had it and it never got much use so I really like to see this be used by someone eventually and I must say a lot of the knits that I have and other baby clothes as well they're now being used by the dolls and we have quite a few dolls in the house and um Yes, I just like to see the clothes being used again and being played with um, by my girls. And yes, a lot of the beanies that I have knit are on the dolls now and some of the cardigans. And um, oh, that's just good. I mean, they don't need to just sit around in storage. And honestly, I don't know what to do with all of these items that I know now don't have anyone to use anymore. Maybe I'll find someone one day who can use them or maybe I'll put them away and my girls can look at them when they're a little bit older and um, think about how small they <laughs> once were. So to keep going, I have a few more here. I only took like the really small ones with me out here to show you. This one is a beautiful cardigan and also a lot of work to make it. This is a drops pattern. <coughs> so a free pattern online on the drops website and I made this out of a um, heirloom carpery which is a cotton wool blend <coughs> excuse me and I think this is the three month size you can see the cabling and the reverse stocking it and the cute little matching buttons and in the pattern there's also a matching beanie to go with it. This was used a lot the first time, not so much the second time because it was middle of summer when this was the right size for my youngest. And this is great because it has like a long cuff that you can fold up so it will fit for a long time. And again it has buttons only up the top. No, this has buttons all the way down but it's an A-line so it's still quite loose and, and nice on the baby and yes this was great and this Capri by Heirloom is now discontinued which is a shame I went back to look for more because it turned out that my first daughter had quite a sensitive skin she had eczema and she had al al allergies and she still has but having the, um, the cotton wool blend was just much better on her skin and the same with the um, bamboo wool is also really good and I use that quite a bit and if I show you the toddler cardigans at some point you'll see there that um, I have used the wool cotton and, and wool bamboo mixes quite a lot for my daughter so that's that one and you can see a lot of these items they use they look like they're not even being worn because they just hold up really well Another pattern that I really enjoyed is the garter yoke cardigan. 
by Jennifer Howell, I think her name is. Yes. So this is one that I made, another sort of um, gender neutral one. And this had a lot of views. It's beautiful. And I made this pattern a few times as gifts as well as for my daughter. So that's a nice crazy colour. I just love putting this on a girl. Had a lot of people not really sure about if she was a boy or a girl <laughs> when I took her around in a pram. But this is a great pattern. The, is it called the baby garter yoke? Garter yoke baby cardigan. And this is, I think it's a shepherd baby wool that I made it out of, fingering weight. Then I, I know that I have more because my list is much longer than my pile of items here. I just, some of the items are floating around in the house somewhere. One of, the last one I'll show you is a um, test knit that I did for Stephanie Lotman and this is the rainbow cardigan and in this one I used a hand dyed just a DK weight that I dyed and my left over from my uh, what's the cardigan February lady sweater my leftover hand dyed New Zealand wool and then just scraps of different greens and browns and I made this, and I'm pretty sure this is a size six months. And I made it before I had my second daughter. I had my um, oldest, and this was just not fitting anyone at the point when I made it. I thought it could be a present for someone. But I um, knit that up, and I realised that as a test knitter, I was meant to knit the one-year-old size. So after this one, I knitted a whole other one, <coughs> and then I did it in pink and purple. And um, that has just been used by my daughter now, actually. <coughs> and this did get a lot of use when she was um, around six months old. And I thought, because this wool here is one that I used. It was actually the same that I used for the, the felted bag that I have back there. So I was very worried about this holding up in washing and things because the wool was sold as like a feltable wool. And um, yes, I was a little bit worried, but it's been great. It's fantastic. I've washed it several times and it's no problem at all. And that's a great pattern. And the, um, the original has the rainbow colours here, so that's why it's called the rainbow cardigan, I guess. But it's also nice uh, in all different sort of colours. So there's some of the baby knits that I wanted to show you, I think here I have up to the largest one is probably, well, not quite one year old size. So I have a whole other pile with um, larger ones that um, my youngest has now grown out of. Uh, but yes, I just wanted to show you, and hopefully, if you need to do a baby knit in the future sometime, just um, might have to give you some ideas and um, so you maybe have seen some designs and patterns that you haven't seen before and um, yes I'll insert this little section at the end of an episode sometime and probably do it at some point when um, I don't have a lot of knitting done maybe and I can add this to make the episode a little bit longer and have a bit more content for you so that's all for the baby knits. So I hope that that little section was interesting to some of you. I realised that I talked about the Bella Baby Layette quite a bit. It's an 80% bamboo, 20% wool. And I've used this a lot for baby knits and I really like it. It's so smooth and it washes quite well. So I just thought I'll show you that. That's what I talked about. So... It's time um, to finish this up. I'm still having my green coconut tea. I'm a bit um, hooked on that at the moment. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day outside. However, it is freezing. 
So um, we do spend quite a bit of time outside, but then it's so nice to go inside to warm up. But um, yes, I'll finish now. And I haven't mentioned anything about the knit along or the travel along that we have in the group. Any information about that can be found in the Ravelry group. Just search Rose Hip Knits Podcast in the group tab and you can find the group and I will post the prices on there and um, all the information is on there so it's probably not long left because it go, goes until the end of July and I'm not sure how much time to be still there when this one comes up on YouTube but um, yes please join in it along this great prices and go and have a look in the group and please join the group there's um, quite a few members now and it's just lovely to um, see your comments and your photos and everything. So it's it's time to go. You know how I can go on and on. I don't like to say goodbye, but this time now. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.